Empty and unloved, some of the world's priciest properties have been forsaken by their owners and left to rot. From royal residencies to presidential holiday homes and sprawling manor houses. But what led to their fall from grace? We take a look inside some of the most expensive abandoned mansions in the world and uncover the mysteries behind their abandonment. So these are the most expensive abandoned mansions in the world. Over in Malta, you can find a hauntingly beautiful building that has seen better days. This historic palazzo has been left untouched for years, but luckily it's still structurally sound, according to Sotheby's Realty, who are currently attempting to sell the property for $5.3 million. Occupying a one-acre lot, the house boasts a stunning walled garden with landscaped flower beds, 300 orange trees, a majestic pine tree, and nine wells. Inside, you'll find 5,400 square feet of living space that showcases the building's amazing history. Dating back to the 18th century, the property was designed as a hunting lodge under the order of Emmanuel, a member of the wealthy and influential Rohan family of France and the 70th Prince and Grandmaster of the Order of St. John. As soon as you enter the property, you can see the amount of money that Emmanuel poured into this place. The lavish interior is still apparent despite its rundown state, so it's hard to picture just how dramatic and grand this entrance hall would have been in its prime. From its intricately carved columns to its beautiful tiled floor, there's much more to love about this abandoned mansion, and even inside the house offers six bedrooms. Many of the interior spaces boast vaulted ceilings, ornate fireplaces, and arches, while others open up to an interior courtyard that's flooded with natural light. There's a banquet hall featuring four 15-foot high statues that represent the Four Seasons, as well as the original stone stairways, an antique living room, and a beautiful cellar. We're not sure why the mansion was left abandoned, but we think it's time that it was brought back to life. The Bishop's Avenue, also known as Billionaire's Row, is one of London's most affluent and controversial streets. The prominent road can be found in Hampstead, and around a third of the mansions along it have been left abandoned, with many of them falling into ruin. Owned mostly by foreign investors who leave their homes uninhabited, these luxury properties are now in a sad state of repair. Many of the 66 homes on Billionaire's Row were built in the late 1970s, and swathes of them seemingly left abandoned to rot. Despite being some of the most valuable homes in Britain, in fact, in 2008, Toprak Mansion on the Bishop's Avenue claimed a new record as the most expensive home ever sold in the UK at that time. The estate was sold for $69 million. As you can see here, this empty hallway is falling apart with a caved-in ceiling that has let in the elements. However, it's still easy to see how grand this home once was, such as the gold banister and stained glass windows within the hallway. As unbelievable as it may seem, some of the homes have been left untouched for over 25 years. This conservatory looks like the owners have just up and left, with an ashtray still perched on the table, and faded magazine stacked high. The Bishop's Avenue has been dubbed one of the most expensive wastelands in the world by developer Anil Varmer, who owns a property on the Notorious Street. Justin Bieber reportedly rented one of the street's most luxurious homes in 2016 for a whopping $150,000 a month. What was once the ultimate place to live in London has become an entire street of wasteful ruins and decaying buildings that are said to be collectively worth almost $500 million. Up next, we go to the Thomas Clay House in Georgia. Built in the 1890s, this empty stately mansion in Augusta, Georgia comes with a pretty amazing history. Offering eight bedrooms and six bathrooms, the sprawling home may be somewhat faded from its illustrious heyday when it was at the heart of high society life, but its prestige is still evident. The abandoned American home is said to have regularly hosted the 27th President of the United States, William Howard Taft, in the early 20th century. Even with dusty floors and graying woodwork, it's not hard to imagine the mansion's former glory. This reception space is nothing short of spectacular from the art style glass light fixtures to the magnificent leaded windows and detailed paneling. At the heart of the Queen Anne style house, this grand carved staircase takes center stage. Talk about making an entrance. Commissioned in the late 19th century by businessman Landon Addison Thomas Jr., the property has been in the same family for over a century. However, it's now listed for $1.5 million. It offers original hardwood floors that extend throughout the interior. Brimming with a treasure trove of stunning period features, it wouldn't take a lot to make this Thomas Clay house a beautiful, bustling home once again. In addition to striking living spaces, the home is surrounded by over three acres of land. While somewhat overgrown and time-worn, signs of a once manicured landscaping are still visible and certainly aren't beyond the point of rescue. Peeking out from behind the overgrowth, the decades certainly have diminished the architecture architectural charm of this house. If this grand estate achieves a million dollar price tag in its current neglected state, 
Who knows how much this empty beauty could be worth once it's restored. Up next is the Swannanoa Mansion, located in Virginia. This imposing Italian Renaissance revival mansion in Virginia was built in 1912 for a business leader and philanthropist Major James H. Dooley at a cost of $2 million, which is a hefty $51 million in today's money. No expense was spared on the ultra-luxurious property which took 300 artisans eight years to finish. A romantic escape from Major Dooley and his beloved wife Sarah Swananoa was kitted out with furnishings worthy of a billionaire, including Carrara marble flooring and wall panels, along with gold plumbing fixtures. The home's wow factor feature is a stunning 4,000 piece Tiffany stained glass window featuring a depiction of Mrs. Dooley that cost $64,000. The envy of the neighborhood, the mansions featured all the latest mod cons, as well as being the first property in the area to have electricity installed. Swannanoa had a cutting edge elevator and dumbwaiter and upon entering the property, guests were wowed by the paneled entrance hall and splendid marble staircase. The Dooleys summered at the property until Major Dooley's death in 1924. Mrs. Dooley died in 1926, and Swannanoa passed to her late husband's two sisters, who didn't waste any time getting rid of it. The mansion was sold for the knockdown price of $300,000, and was converted into a country club, which opened in 1929, but then closed in 1932, on the account of the Great Depression. The mansion was left empty for years. During the Second World War, the U.S. Navy floated plans to purchase the property, but was put off by the cost. Swannanoa finally found a buyer in 1944 when the local businessman, A.T. Dulaney, acquired the house for $60,000. He leased it to a polymath, Walter Russell, and his sculptor wife, Lau, who established a New Age university on the estate. Russell died in 1963, and his wife continued to lease the property until her death in 1988, when it was repurposed as the Russell Museum. Owners of the Delaney family shut the museum in 1998 and partly renovated the property, but the vacant Gilded Age mansion, which they describe as a money pit, still requires extensive work. Up next, we have Kinmill Hall in the UK. The sprawling country house was built for copper tycoon Hugh Robert Hughes who became an HRH due to the suitably regal lifestyle. The mansion passed through several families and was last used as a private home in 1929 when it was sold to the highest bidder and converted into a boys' school. Kinmo Hall became a spa in the 1930s and a military home during the Second World War. The mansion changed hands again after the war when it reopened as a school for girls. A fire in 1975 forced the school to relocate and Kinmo Hall was acquired and restored by businessman Eddie Vince, who used it as a Christian Conference Center. There were plans to transform Kinmo Hall into a luxury hotel, but the project never came to fruition. In 2011, a mystery buyer bought the mansion for a bargain $1.9 million with the intention of developing the elusive hotel. Ambitious plans were unveiled in 2012, but work on the new hotel failed to commence. Kinmo Hall went even more downhill. Looters descended on the abandoned property in 2013 and made off with a set of carved wooden panels gifted to Hughes by Queen Victoria, who is believed to have stated the house in the 1870s. Kinmo Hall was added to the Victorian Society's top 10 most endangered buildings list in 2015 due to its worsening condition. However, in 2021, the estate was sold to a local resident at auction for $1.3 million, so its luck could be about to change. Could Kinmo Hall be saved and be brought back to the brink? Only time will tell. Up next is the Hook End Manor in the UK. Destined to be the later home of Pink Floyd's David Gilmore, this mansion in Oxfordshire was built in 15 80 for the Bishop of Reading, and it is thought to have served as a psychiatric asylum during its long history. Selfridge's owner, Sir Charles Clore, acquired the 11 bedroom manor during the 1950s and sold it in 1972 to Alvin Lee, lead singer of the band 10 years after, who built a recording studio in the barn. Lee put down several albums at the studio but let go of the property, which was snapped up by David Gilmore from Pink Floyd in 1980. The band's giant inflatable pig was stored on the premises, and two Pink Floyd LPs were recorded in the studio. Gilmore sold in 1986 and the Manor House and the recording studio eventually passed to Frankie Goes to Hollywood producer Trevor Horn. Horn transformed the property into Hook End Productions, which was the UK's most luxurious recording venue from the late 1980s to the 2000s. An impressive lineup of musicians recorded singles and albums there, including Rod Stewart, The Manic Street Preachers, and Seal and the Smiths. During his stay at the Manor, Morrissey claimed to have been visited by the ghost of a monk. The Phantom would appear during the hours of the morning as if it were to wake people to pray. In fact, 
Rumor has it that David Gilmour gave up the property because his wife Ginger was so freaked out by the paranormal activity, she refused to stay there. Tragedy struck at the manor in 2006 when Horn's wife, Jill Sinclair, was shot accidentally by their son Aaron, who was practicing with his air rifle and had no idea his mother was nearby. Sinclair fell into a deep coma and never fully recovered. Horn decided to sell after the following accident and the property was bought by producer Mark White in 2009 for $15 million. White invested in the studio, but the house lay neglected for years. The interior was captured over the last couple years when the manor appeared to be completely abandoned with the rising damp wallpaper peeling off the walls. Fortunately, Hook End has since been given a new lease of life and is in the process of being brought back to the brink. Up next, we go to Loftus Hall in Ireland. This estate spans 23,500 square feet and was originally built by the Norman knight Raymond Les Grouse. It was left deserted some time ago, likely due to its spooky secrets. Former Lord Mayor George Lawler of Wexford took to the airways on the Q102 Breakfast Show in April 2021 to reveal the property's creepy past. According to a legend, during a particularly bad storm, a dark stranger ap approached Loftus Hall on horseback after his ship was driven into the rocks just outside. He spent a few days with the Tottenham family who owned the building at the time until one night they discovered that their guest house had a cloven hoof. When he realized he was rumbled, the stranger disappeared through the roof in the ball flames. This disturbing incident is said to have made the youngest member of the family fall into madness. Despite its state of despair, it's easy to imagine how amazing this abandoned castle could be if it was given the right attention. It comes complete with 22 bedrooms and 14 bathrooms, plus various reception rooms and function areas. Every room is kitted out with striking period fixtures, from decorative floors to ornate fireplaces. Spread across three floors, the home's best features include its remarkable hand-carved staircase and beautifully tiled entrance lobby. What's more, the estate is surrounded by 63 acres and comes with its own private beach. If you're brave enough to take on such an extreme fixer-upper, then Loftus Hall is on the market for $3.1 million. All right, everyone, I think that's going to wrap this video up. Like I mentioned in the beginning, follow all my social media and also 50% of the people who watch me don't subscribe. So just if you're watching, just click the subscribe button. It's free. It means a lot. And then an alternative option would be to become a member, which costs a couple dollars. But then, you know, I'll be calling you guys, FaceTiming you guys. You get cool badges. You get exclusive videos. Um, I'll be making videos that I can't show like public channel. So you guys get a ton of cool features and by clicking here and becoming a member. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video i love you guys thank you for the constant support feel free to share this video on anything and i'll see you in the next video later